Yeah, so there we go. So we are recording live now. So going over the agenda for tonight. Um, so tonight's main topic is going to be our food service and then extra programs that are not specifically merit badge, kind of those evening programs and open programs. And then for scouts that need any service hours over the summer, what service opportunities we have, uh, whether for rank advancement or just for fun. Um, and the extra programs are also going to include the activities that get signed up for at camp and how that works. Um, yeah, so diving right in with our food service, we use a, a professional food service company called Candle Dining. Uh, they specialize in summer camp uh, and kind of long-term camp uh, and year-round camp uh, food service uh, yeah, capabilities. They're very, very good. Uh, they have a excellent dietitian staff and both the East and West dining halls are going to have uh, dietitians or uh, yeah, dietitians in their kitchens this summer. Um, and all of the menus that we provide, which will also be posted up online tomorrow because they're, I think I just saw them come in a few minutes ago from uh, Candle's uh, dietitian. So they're all approved and those will get posted up on the website as well. Um, if you do have any special dietary needs, whether religious or just uh, allergies or anything else, um, if you make sure to fill out the special diet request form, uh, you can either scan the QR code here, it is linked in the camp planning guide, um, or if you save that URL down below, um, which will also be in the email that you get tomorrow with it. Uh, please make sure that you fill that out at least two weeks ahead of when you are going to be at camp or any of your scouts if you have them as well. So uh, share this with your parents and uh, any or guardians of any of the scouts that you have that uh, may have special dietary needs. Uh, we want to make sure that food is not a barrier to kids being at camp. And I know that uh, if if these are all filled out ahead of time and we know we have any severe allergies to any particular food uh, substance, whether if like especially nuts are very common. I know we have an East Camp, we're generally a peanut and tree nut free camp in East Camp uh, because this for the last few years, we've had a couple staff members that have that. So just all summer long, it's been peanut, tree nut allergy, uh, very friendly. Uh, but we'll make that accommodation for either camp uh, just to make sure that, uh, as I mentioned, that making sure that you you and your scouts get the nutritious and delicious food that you need uh, to enjoy your time at camp um, is uh, not a barrier. So uh, one of the things that we do that we really like that Candle provides for us is they have a additional kind of uh, either breakfast bar or salad bar or extra sides bar. Uh, whether that's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, uh, there is a kind of an extra bar outside the main serving line that you're able to get uh, extra food from, whether it's because you don't like uh, the food that's on the serving line or because you're just trying to eat a very particular diet. Um, and if you are attending camp during an even week this summer, um, oops, that didn't make it on there. Um, if you're attending camp during an even week this summer, Candle will be uh, piloting a new uh, program for us this year, which is the Morning Boost uh, Smoothie Bar, um, which they're just trying, they're just starting to uh, develop and roll out, and we're going to be their kind of their guinea pigs for it, um, and it should be pretty good. They sent uh, they sent me uh, a very quick description of what it is, but they're uh, they're it's going to be pretty neat to see. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, and so all of this applies for the main dining hall service, but it also applies for the uh, patrol cooking. If you're a troop or a crew that likes to still cook your meals in the in your campsite, uh, we do provide that as an option. Um, we do again ask at, at least two weeks ahead of time so that we can make sure that we have all the food uh, packaged up uh, for you. And the way that that works is the uh, Candle Food Service will provide all of the kind of ingredients for the meals and they'll prepackage it based on how many people are in your unit, uh, plus a little bit extra so that you have uh, seconds for everybody at your campsite. And then um, you'll come down to the dining hall and pick that up uh, before each meal. Uh, so for breakfast, that tends to be a little bit earlier uh, in the day. So if you're, especially if you are in East Camp, make sure to get down to the dining hall super early. 
uh, for that. Um, all of the kind of specifics uh, will be covered uh, when you check in at the uh, at the Sunday night leaders meeting uh, as part of the check-in process. Um, and if there are any patrol cooking units, you will meet with Candle Dining uh, with their uh, food service staff in the at the dining hall to kind of discuss logistics for uh, your unit's uh, patrol cooking needs in particular. Uh, you do need to provide your own equipment for patrol cooking, but we'll have ice and everything else provided for you as part of that. Um, okay, so before I move on to uh, the program, uh, kind of extra programs, evening programs and open programs, are there any questions about uh, food service? Can I just ask a little more about the patrol uh, cooking, Rory? Yeah, I, I have absolutely. read a little bit about that. So if you decide to do that, um, is it kind of an all or nothing? Can you do that for a subset of your unit or does the entire unit need to do it? And do you, it, it seems like it can only be done on certain like nights or for certain meals. Um, generally, um, generally if, if, uh, would you mind muting? There we go. Sorry, I was getting some echo there. Um, yeah, so uh, generally it is an all or nothing where it's the whole unit or, or uh, not at all. Um, and it is also generally uh, every meal except for the Wednesday night or Sunday night dinner when you're checking into camp, Wednesday night dinner when we are having our adult leader uh, special dinner on Wednesday nights. And then on um, either Tuesday or Thursday uh, dinner, which is uh, if you're in West Camp, our staff uh, take their night off to go do laundry and uh, do their best to embody a scout is clean. Um, and so during that time, we actually have a, a kind of barbecue cookout um, in West Camp. And then that same thing happens on Thursday evening. So those would be kind of the only uh, only nights where you wouldn't be able to do your patrol cooking dinner. Um, but otherwise, it can be for every meal. Yeah, good question. Thank you. Um, any other questions on food service? Okay. Um, before I dive into the programs, I do want to take a, a minute to answer the question about hiring a bus company for transportation. Um, if you are in the NEIC uh, kind of Lake County, Cook County area, uh, we do have a bus service that we're um, trying to fill out for each week. It is a great opportunity to kind of save on having to drive all, uh, up here. Um, it's it's fun. Uh, it's a good way for kids to to travel up here and you, for you not to have to get tired from driving uh, with them as well. Um, if you're outside the NEIC area, but if you're between kind of Illinois, if you're between uh, NEIC and camp, uh, we can schedule kind of detours with our bus company to pick you up along the way. Um, so if you have those kind of, if you're interested in those options, uh, please uh, send me an email or, uh, uh, yeah, send me an email. That's probably the best way to, to ask. Um, yeah, so. Uh, So um, I will also include the link for the bus form again in the summary email for this. Okay. Uh, moving in to our kind of our program opportunities. So uh, if you missed last week's or sorry, last month's um, mug club meeting, we kind of went over the schedule kind of overall big picture along with um, how the schedule is structured, how to read the, the schedule that's out on the website. Um, if you want to take a look at the schedule, uh, the quickest way to get to it, if you don't have it downloaded already, is uh, makajwan.com slash schedules. Uh, that'll take you right to all of the most current stuff. It was updated Friday morning. Um, if you are listed as a contact for your troop, you should have gotten an email Friday morning. And if you didn't, but you are listed, let me know, because I think we might have a couple of emails that are incorrect. Um, but yeah, so on the schedule, there's 
programs and merit badges that are called open or walk-in uh, programs. And those are uh, just walk-in. So you don't need to sign up for them ahead of time. Uh, for merit badges, it does help the staff and your at camp leadership if the scouts do sign up ahead of time. But like I said, they don't need to. It just helps with uh, making sure that uh, if at the, at the merit badge session when the kids are uh, signing into it, uh, that the records sheet is already completed with their name, with their troop spelled correctly. Um, everything is uh, uh, taken care of ahead of time uh, just to help kind of um, speed up the actual, okay, let's, let's learn how to do uh, basketry. Let's get right into whatever the topic of the, the merit badge may be. Um, so that's kind of what those, um, for, for merit badges, that's the pre-sign up for it. Um, for any of the other things, if it says open on the schedule, um, then that means you don't need to sign up for it at all. And you can just go right to that area and see what they have to offer. You can ask about, hey, I want to go to the Nature Center. I want to go to EcoCon and I really want to learn about snakes. Great. Cool. Let's do that. So you can just go to EcoCon and uh, talk to them about whatever they have in the area and learn all about it. Um, yeah, so uh, Chuck Pint brought up a good point uh, that some areas do have limits on how many scouts they can take. In particular, I'm thinking um, uh, cycling, climbing, um, the zipline area does have limits on that as well. And that's just based on the number uh, of pieces of equipment that we do have. So good point, Chuck. Um, and just generally speaking, our, our areas are open from 9 to 12, uh, from 2 to 5, and 7 to 8. Uh, but at camp, you may get some messaging about uh, program areas being open outside of the typical program time. So, uh, for example, at Aquatics, uh, you'll have early morning boating as one of the options. So that's when you head down to Aquatics, typically about 6.30 uh, in the morning, and you can take out boats to go fishing just to enjoy a nice calm morning with the, the water almost mirror smooth uh, before the winds pick up. Um, there might be programs that go on after eight o'clock at night, like the luau night at aquatics. Um, that's generally speaking, uh, kind of changes between east and west camp with kind of what the theme of it is. But generally, it's come hang out uh, at the waterfront and do some organized activities, some patrol challenges, some uh, grilled cheeses or quesadillas or some other type of um, kind of beachfront food prep. Um, it's a lot of fun, a lot of music. Uh, and then some other extra programs that are at the aquatics area are the Mile Swim, which is uh, the Mile Swim Award. Uh, war Canoe Races, which are those two big boats in the top right picture there. Um, eight to 10 kids per boat and you will have a bracket and you get to race troop against troop all throughout the week. And then we culminate with a big East Camp versus West Camp war canoe race. Um, and if there's enough interest from Scoutmasters, we'll also do a Scoutmaster versus staff war canoe race, which is always fun. Um, war canoe races are, great question, uh, Nancy. Uh, war canoe races are kind of every night or uh, they might be right after lunch or they might be uh, during the afternoon uh, those are all communicated out uh, once we figure out how many people have signed up for it. Um, if you are interested in doing a war canoe paddle, like if you just want to take the war canoes out with your troop, uh, that can be arranged with the aquatics director as well, as long as there's no uh, war canoe races going on. So we try to be very accommodating once you're actually at camp. Um, it's very hard to sign up for all of these things ahead of camp because the weather between now and when camp is very unpredictable. So <laughs> um, signing up for, we're gonna do our, our, our races or our uh, everything on Tuesday because that's the day that we want to do it. Um, we're, we're gonna make sure that you get the experience that you wanna have um, and that the weather that you, uh, weather willing is kind, of what it, is kind of what it boils down to. That's the same thing for some of the activities that we'll do or that I'll cover uh, later on. So um, any questions on um, kind of basic aquatics programs or extra programs? 
Oh, there's uh, oh, there's uh, oh, uh, learn to swim is another one. That's a one of those open. Uh, it's not a marapad. It's a for scouts or adults that are not as capable with swimming as they would like to be. Uh, those are kind of set aside times where the staff will uh, work with you to uh, practice and improve your uh, swimming skill set. Um, I think, uh, Jane, did you have another question? No, just going back to the previous slide about the merit badges and the open ones that don't require sign up. This caused a little confusion with um, one of my new families. Um, a lot for week three, a lot of things filled up apparently pretty quickly, right? When sign up had opened a Friday, but and so they they noticed that their, some of the badges that the child wanted to take were full, but they had the asterisk saying that they were open. So I was kind of trying to explain that. So they weren't really sure, should they leave that spot empty and then just plan that, you know, the scout will go, <laughs> go at that time to that merit badge that doesn't require sign up um, or what, or do they anticipating opening other spots or what's the, recommendation there. Yeah, uh, later this week I'll be, um, after it being open for uh, the better part of a week, I'm going to be looking at all the different sessions and uh, talking with the area directors of each program area and uh, looking at increasing the, the session sizes. Uh, but for any of those merit badges that are listed as open, um, there will be space for them in the area. Um, if they if they want to leave that space open in their schedule, they'll be able to walk into the area and um, at that time and be able to take the badge. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. That's a good question. Okay. Um, new at Aquatics for this year, we have two new features. Um, one is going to be kind of a uh, relatively limited pool of people that will be able to use it. Probably some uh, very uh, more experienced scoutmasters. We have a brand new canoe, uh, wooden cedar strip canoe that was made by one of our um, alumni uh, from our Makajwan Alumni Association, and then uh, made by the same individual. Uh, we are looking at building. Well, now looking at. He's actually building them, uh, thanks to generous donation from his um, uh, former employer when he retired. Uh, he's building some smaller rowboats because uh, most, as if, if you've ever looked at or uh, used the rowboats at either our camp or most scout camps, they're typically quite large uh, and heavy and unwieldy. And if you're uh, unfamiliar with them or you're learning how to uh, go rowing at all um, or just how to row uh, a boat, uh, they're not, they don't leave the best impression. Um, but these uh, boats are based off of uh, the new rowboats that he's making. I think we're going to get three for this season. And then based on how well they're received, uh, he's going to look at building some more for uh, for the next year with the hope of having um, four to six in each in each camp eventually. Um, and so these are based off of a design that is used um, across the country as a youth rowing boat. Um, so they're smaller. Um, if you attended camp, if you attended our camp in the 70s, these are very, very similarly sized to that. Uh, we don't have a, we don't have very many people uh, on, on this call that were campers at Makaj One in the 70s, but uh, there's there's a few of them. And yeah, so it'll be really, really cool. I'm excited to see these um, uh, zipping around uh, Lake Killian. So. Uh, moving on to EcoCon. So EcoCon is our nature center area or nature lodge. Um, so we have, they have an evening program almost every single night of the week. Um, and it can range from native plant night where you learn about um, various native plants to the area, what they're used for. These are typically kind of the more useful ones. Uh, whether that's kind of wild edible plants or whether it's uh, reeds for uh, that could have been used for making things or different various uh, tea plants. Uh, the fish fry where scouts will get to learn how to uh, bread and fry fish uh, outside of uh, fishing merit badge. Um, this is also one of those extra evening programs that can be used to complete the uh, fishing merit badge requirements. Um, at EcoCon, you, you'll also be able to sign up for, uh, or not at EcoCon, but part of EcoCon's program is also 
uh, taking uh, fishing trips on our pontoon boats around Killian and getting to go to different spots there. Uh, and they'll lead na nature hikes too throughout the, throughout the week. Um, it might be to a particular spot in camp, uh, or it might just be to go uh, help scouts earn um, different requirements for badges, like if you want some assistance with uh, capturing or not capturing, but identifying all the right number of bird species that scouts need to earn for bird study merit badge, that's a great opportunity for that. Um, and then also, this isn't the, the best picture for astronomy overnight. Uh, this is taken at our welcome center. Um, but it is, um, it's, I mean, even with the light pollution there in the foreground of the photo, you can still see all the stars in the sky. Um, with the camp is located far enough from most population centers that you can see very easily uh, the arms of the Milky Way galaxy. Um, and then occasionally, if conditions are right, uh, you can also see the northern lights even during the summertime. Um, very, very rare when that happens, but it is very cool. Um, I spent many a night just hanging out in the, the open parts of the campsite at night when I was a kid here. So, yeah. Um, and the astronomy overnight uh, in West Camp, you typically go to the West Camp field, which is a very, very large open space. And you'll bring your sleeping bags and camp out overnight or at least until about midnight or so to really get uh, some true dark uh, sky watching. Okay, any questions on EcoCon? Okay, moving on to Handicraft. So Handicraft is the best place in camp to make all of your own uh, take-home reminders of a week well spent at camp, whether that's uh, a new knife sheath or whether that's a model rocket or everything in between. Um, so it's it's a really cool spot. I know with composite materials during uh, the open times at Handicraft, you can go down and make your own uh, neckerchief slides or belt buckles or other kind of trinkets um, if you want. Uh, same thing with wood carving. The wood carving, basketry, and leatherworking kits are all available at the trading post for anybody that's not in the merit badge itself. Um, and you'll be able to bring those down. And if you need any help or if you want some specialized tools for any of the activities, um, Handicraft is the spot to go. And the staff will be very knowledgeable and will help you, will be able to help you figure out um, anything that you need. So uh, most of their e special evening programs are related to one or all of these activities. Um, I know one, one summer uh, they had a, it was towards the end of the week, but they had a, week-long messaging saying, keep your pop tabs. And then uh, the area director worked with all the kids that showed up to, to the metal night that they had, and they all made chain mail out of pop tabs. Um, it was very silly, very fun, very cool. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's, it's a really cool spot. Um, for wood carving, uh, you do need to have, or your scouts would need to have their totem chits or totem chips, which you can either work on as a troop before you get up to camp, or if you head over to uh, Trailblazer during their open times, you'll be able to work with the Trailblazer staff. The scouts will be able to work with the Trailblazer staff to um, earn their totem chips. Yeah. Any questions on handicraft programs? It's, it's kind of to have their card, their totem chip card with them? If they can, otherwise a signed note from the Scoutmaster would be accepted as well. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. and if your troop needs totem chip cards while they're at camp, uh, talk to the office staff and they'll be able to provide them for you. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, uh, scouts are, I, I know I lost my totem chip card multiple times, not because it was taken away, but because I just was terrible at keeping track of things. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so that's kind of handicraft. Uh, we do also have uh, a kiln in either camp. Um, and I know that we are getting, I uh, can't remember how many, but we had somebody uh, step up and they are donating a few more of the pottery wheels to each camp. 
Um, so we're going to have even more opportunities for um, pottery, merit badge, and kind of making bowls and all that. So the kiln, I believe the kiln typically gets fired once or twice a week. Um, so make sure to head, if you're interested in uh, taking advantage of that, you can head down there earlier in the week and make sure to get your um, dried uh, pottery into the kiln so that it uh, will survive the travel home. Any other questions on handicraft? Rory, are there any are there any things that they could use, like in an area such as handicraft, that many of us might have, you know, kicking around, such as old art supplies or you know certain recyclable type containers, where we could we could put the word out and bring things up that could be used at camp, like in handicraft or anywhere. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I uh, developing a list. I'm talking with all of our area directors and by the end of our uh, spring training, which is the end of this month, I will hopefully have all of their requisitions in um, so that we can get all those kind of specialty things for any programs that they are thinking about running, but aren't sure if we'll be able to have enough two liter bottles to run, for example. Um, that's that's <laughs> some things like that are, are um easier to collect over the course of the, the winter months <laughs> rather than um, anything else. So yeah, good question. Thank you. Uh, once I have that list developed, I will be um, sending that out to everybody as well. So thank you very much. Okay, moving on from handicraft to our other core uh, scout skill area. So Scout Craft at Makajuan is most known for their wilderness survival overnight, uh, which is primarily done for the scouts that are in the wilderness survival merit badge. Um, but it is a very popular program, especially among older scouts, um, especially those that just like the, the challenge of going out to an area of camp and building a fire from the materials that you scoun, uh, scavenge and building a shelter from the ma materials around you as well. Um, so we are, East Camp uh, got this, got their uh, wilderness survival area started back up at the, towards the end of last summer and West Camp will be moving to an area a little bit closer into West Camp, but it'll feel a lot more, uh, a lot more wild and a little bit, it'll feel further out, but it'll actually be much closer. Um, and yeah. So that, that program is where uh, scouts just kind of go out with their basic survival kit and then uh, spend the night and they get paired up with other scouts that sign up for it. Um, and we are, we make sure that nobody's ever more than the, the two years apart so that we're following all the same rules that we, that we need to be following. Um, throughout the week, scout craft will have um, fire building challenges or they might have some outdoor skill challenges. Uh, it's a great spot for scouts to be working on their pioneering structures. Uh, the scout craft staff are very good at teaching all the basic lashings and um, yeah, really it's, it's a cool spot. Uh, we're kind of expanding it back into the, at least in West Camp, we're expanding their scout craft area back into the, what remains of the pine forest uh, from the 2019 storm. And then in East Camp, we are, oops, um, we're continuing to, to keep that area kind of as is. Um, so a question on Scoutcraft, before we move to other programs. Um, can, any attend, uh, can any scout attend the overnight um, for the wilderness survival or is it just those taking the merit badge? Um, generally, uh, depends on the, the amount of interest in the scouts that are at camp, but we do try and keep them in two groups. So if there's enough interest from scouts that wanna take it that are not in the merit badge, we'll have a separate group um, that is, uh, taking that is going on at the same time in a similar in a very close area, but separate from the scouts that are in the merit badge. Yeah. Good question. Rory, I have a question. Uh, yeah. Dick Turner. Um, mm -hmm. So we, we have a scout that uh, almost finished pioneering last year, but still needs to do their project. Mm -hmm. uh, should they sign up for pioneering? this year just to complete the project or come during an open slot? I would go, I would have them go down during one of the open times and not sign up for the merit badge. Um, same thing with any other partials. If 
uh, unless it's unless they're missing the majority of the requirements. But for something as as straightforward as just uh, finishing the pioneering structure, um, I think that going down during the open time would be uh, just just fine. Uh, make sure that they do. If it's a partial from the Kajwan, we can look up those partials at camp. Um, but if it's a partial from another merit badge counselor or another summer camp, then make sure to bring a blue card with you. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Good question. Um, a follow up question for wilderness survival overnight is when do they have to sign up? Uh, sign ups for that are once you once you are at camp and that'll be messaged um, during either at the dining hall or it'll be messaged during the morning mug club meetings or both. Most likely both. Um, but yeah. And most of these evening programs are extra, actually all of these evening are extra programs uh, tonight are gonna be at camp signups. Um, so really uh, merit badge signups and Corps de Bois are really the only ones that you need to sign up for ahead of camp. Yeah. Um, any other questions for Scoutcraft before I move on to Trailblazer? All right, um, don't see any rolling in. So moving on to Trailblazer, um, they're a primarily first year, uh, first year, first and second year scout program or introduction to scouting program. Um, there's a really great one pager, a kind of one page description on the schedules page um, that outlines roughly when um, when things will be happening during the week at Trailblazer. Um, uh, so like Monday is the five mile hike um, around camp, and then it will list out what requirements are going to be covered there. Uh, day two focuses on knots and lashings. Day three is focusing on aquatics and day four or Thursday is focusing on first aid requirements. Um, and for the um, for the tenderfoot through first class ranks, you can, uh, scouts can actually work on all of those requirements concurrently. Obviously it makes sense to start with uh, basic knots before you're working on square lashings and um, everything else. So we'll, it's a skill-based progression, uh, but within the trailblazer signups, we'll, uh, the staff will split people out based on what skills they need to be working on. Um, and then having the, the scouts that are uh, learning their first class skills will also help uh, teach tenderfoot uh, scouts those uh, more kind of more basic knots. So we kind of mix and match everybody all around. Um, we do have the same schedule in East Camp and West Camp this year for Trailblazer, just trying to simplify it um, and the same record keeping system as well. So periodically throughout the week at your um, mug club meetings in the morning, um, you'll get a printout from the office staff, which will have a uh, kind of a listing of your your troop scouts in the merit badge, or sorry, in Trailblazer, um, and uh, kind of ranking what their skill level was, whether they were proficient and like they have the skill mastered, or whether they're uh, they know it. It just takes them a few times to repeat it. So we don't, our staff don't sign off on books. Um, that's still um, the scout master's role to make sure that they are testing the scouts and. Um, that way it's up to the unit to determine whether or not the scouts have uh, really learned the skills. Our staff are there as a resource to help teach the skills, um, but it's still for the uh, tenderfoot through first class rank requirements. It is still up to your unit's leadership to determine whether they have met the requirements. Uh, for scouts that don't need or that already have most of the requirements covered in the Trailblazer program, um, if they just need a few things here and there, um, then going down during the 11 a.m. or the 4 p.m. session for Trailblazer is really uh, the best uh, the best time to go down, and they wouldn't need to go down for the whole, um, they wouldn't need to sign up for a whole Trailblazer session if they're just looking to get a few of the requirements. So those open, those open times at Trailblazer are great times for scouts to just work on a few of the requirements. Yeah, um, and then I know both uh, Trailblazers also build obstacle courses uh, as part of their, um, their kind of setting up the area, which are also just really fun opportunities to um, have scouts compete against each other too. Yeah. 
Um, any questions on trailblazer programs? Moving on to uh, Pinnacle. So Pinnacle is structured differently in East and West Camp. In East Camp, the Pinnacle program is distributed to the different, um, all the different other program areas. So these challenges will be taking place either across all of the program areas in East Camp or um, at the program area that is most relevant to whichever challenge that is. So like Dutch Oven Cooking and Iron Chef are going to be at Scout Craft. Uh, the tour to camp competition is going to be all over camp. Um, so in West Camp, I know that we, we're uh, keeping the pinnacle area as is. So all of these competitions will be or challenges will be meeting at that area. But it is going to be a patrol based or kind of uh, forming patrols based off of the older scouts that show up and then having them compete against each other or work collaboratively to do these various challenges. So the staff are developing all of the kind of documentation for these challenges right now, but I know that uh, Melissa, who's our West Camp um, Pinnacle Program Director, is our uh, kind of champion for Pinnacle, and she's helping develop a lot of these, and she is super excited and super stoked um, to make sure that these are all going to be as much fun as absolutely possible. So these are, again, these are just things that kids can sign up for at camp. It's nothing you have to worry about signing up for ahead of time. Uh, they're just uh, kind of a sampling of all the different non-advancement based things that you can do. All right, um, and at shooting sports. So uh, East and West shooting sports do have different open times uh, based on uh, trying to make sure that there's um, kind of a variety of opportunity for kids to go down based on what merit badges they are in um, or what uh, trailblazer sessions they are in. Um, so what does open shoot means? Uh, open shoot means that the range is open for anybody to come down and shoot, uh, whether that's uh, rifle or archery in West Camp or rifle, archery, and shotgun in East Camp. Um, we are hoping that we can get our, um, our staff members to be pistol instructor certified, in which case any scouts that are over the age of 14 would be able to um, get that experience as well, but we're um, some of the some of the NRA pistol instructor courses are uh, struggling to get off the ground right now. So uh, we've been working hard through the off season to try and make sure everybody can get certified. But if it's not available, to if it's not able to happen before camp, um, then uh, we will not be able to offer that. So a couple questions on um, open shoot. Uh, so can scouts who have partials from last year complete them at open shoot? Absolutely. That's the great, that's the best opportunity for them to do that. They would need to bring, again, if it's, um, if it's a Makaj one, uh, partial merit badge, we'll be able to have that record available. Um, and if it is not, make sure that they bring a blue card with them that says what requirements they need to work on. It's typically the shooting requirements because uh, for first time shooters, getting the accuracy required um, can be challenging if you're not used to it. Um, for scouts that are smaller this year, we did win, or we did not win, but we were awarded um, some new 22 uh, caliber rifles for that are a little bit smaller size. So for those uh, smaller 11 and 12 year olds or just smaller people just generally, uh, we do have some smaller firearms that will be able to be a little bit easier for them to use uh, from a handling perspective. Uh, for open shoot, do they have to attend the Monday night safety session? So that's referring to thing, uh, something we've done in the past, which is uh, we had one safety session throughout the week, which was Monday. Um, I'm going to be working to see if we can offer more of those throughout the week. Um, because sometimes Monday night, um, that safety session can get, uh, if it's choosing between a safety session and a luau, I know I would probably choose the luau. So um, I'm going to be working with our shooting sports committee within NEIC to make sure that we are um, providing as much safety briefing as we can to make sure that we are operating uh, safe ranges at our camp. Um, but I also want to make sure that that's being not the safety, but 
the opportunities for safety briefings are being balanced with uh, making sure that people can still come down and shoot even if they chose to do something else during the, the typical Monday night safety meeting. Yeah. Cool. Um, for open shoot, uh, what do I need to bring or what do I need to bring to shooting sports generally? Um, archery, uh, aside from the uh, tokens that the scouts in the merit badge need to bring for their arrow kit, Archery does not cost anything for anybody to shoot at camp. Um, and rifle uh, is gonna be taking tickets. So uh, the, just like we've always done in the past, you can purchase um, shooting sports tickets at your trading post in East or West camp, um, and then bring those tickets down to your range and you will get uh, 25 shots per ticket for rifle and you will get uh, three shots with shotgun. or I mixed up those numbers. Um, <laughs> I don't have the numbers directly in front of me, so don't quote me on that. Um, but um, we'll have that um, printed out and it'll be in your leader's binder. Um, but yeah, so the ticket prices, I, I am totally spacing right now and off the top of my head, so I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, so you do have to have tickets when you go down for open shoot. Um, if you have scouts in rifle shooting merit badge or shotgun shooting merit badge, um have that make sure that they come down with the number of tickets that or sorry the number of tokens that are listed in the uh merit badge information document um and they will get because they're in the merit badge they'll get an extra few shots um as part of the as part of their merit badge sign up as part of the tokens that they bring in um, and for scouts in the merit badges if they Bring the tokens in they will get a punch card that can they can either take back to their campsite with them or they can uh, leave at the area so that they don't have to worry about losing it okay uh, any question any other questions about shooting sports Um, I anticipate one about shotgun since shotgun is only being offered in East Camp. Um, if you are interested in going down for open shoot for shotgun shooting, um, and if you are a West Camp uh, troop, then you would still be able to head over to East uh, Shooting Sports to uh, participate in the open shooting uh, at shotgun. All right, moving on from shooting sports to the Triangle M Ranch. So we are one of the few scout camps in our area that still has a full uh, equestrian program at our Triangle M Ranch. Um, so dependent, ranch night is the typical evening program. Um, that's when we'll have a bunch of staff coming out. We'll do a campfire, s'mores, all that, kind of a much more organized program that takes place at the ranch. Uh, there are also evening trail rides that will be available. Uh, we kind of adjust the, the trail ride schedule for each week, depending on what the weather forecast is. So um, that'll be communicated out as part of the Sunday evening uh, leaders meeting that you'll participate in once you are at camp. Um, but yeah, the trail rides, the Triangle M Ranch is located on the Wabaningo part of camp. So it's not quite walking distance from west. Um, and it's definitely not walking distance from east. Um, and yeah, so yeah, so you would need to kind of, we typically organize um, among the adult leadership, we'll organize a carpool for whether that's trail rides, if we have a trail ride that's composed of uh, troop, uh, scouts from two or three troops, we'll have everybody um, collaborate to make sure that everybody can get over to the range. Um, so I know that our ranch director this year, her name is Andy Jerkoy. She's uh, a, in school to be a veterinarian technician and is very excited to be working back here. She was our ranch director in 2021. Um, and she's bringing uh, pretty much a menagerie of animals uh, to camp this summer. Um, so it's gonna be a ton of fun. And um, she's planning on having something small going on every single night of the week, just to 
you know, it's fun to be at the ranch. And sometimes that's, uh, we've had scouts that they jive most with everything going on at the ranch because it's a little bit like more laid back. It's a little bit lower, um, kind of lower energy. Um, so it can be a great place for scouts that can get overwhelmed easily too. Um, trail rides are, um, like I said, kind of periodically throughout the through, throughout the week, but there will be breakfast and there will be dinner trail rides available this year. Uh, trail rides are typically uh, 30 to 45 minutes, uh, kind of depending on conditions. Um, yes, so a uh, couple questions on the ranch that I will answer in order that I receive them. So do scouts in horsemanship have priority for the trail rides? Um, scouts in horsemanship will get to go on trail rides as part of the merit badge this year. Um, I know we've done a few shorter rides as part of the merit badge in the past, uh, but with the change in the merit badge schedule to uh, have horsemanship take up longer times, um, they'll be getting a much more in-depth uh, equestrian kind of program experience um, than they uh, have in the past. Um, Andy runs a very, very good program, so I'm very excited to have her back on the team. Um, Yes. Uh, so another question is, do people still need to have boots for horseback rides? And the answer is yes. Um, you have to have a boot with a heel. Uh, most hiking boots do count for that because most of them have a defined heel. And that is so that when you are standing in the stirrups or sitting in the stirrups, your boots will be able to have somewhere for the stirrups to rest in them. It's a safety concern. Uh, they'll also want to have long pants with them. So this is all, all uh, I'll be sending out reminders as we get closer to camp too, because um, you also need to have closed toed shoes for uh, most, most everywhere at camp, uh, you need to have closed toed shoes. Um, and there's some activities where you wanna make sure you have appropriate footwear like cycling. Um, we had an incident a few years ago where um, a scout was wearing Crocs while mountain biking. And uh, there was, uh, it, it, Crocs don't have very good traction, and he, uh, the scout, got uh, injured. It was fine, but um, did did have an injury occur because of that. Um, so we got to make sure that people have the appropriate clothing and attire for that activity, whether that's um, the appropriate swimming attire or um, boots and long pants for being at the ranch. Great questions. Okay. Moving on. Any other questions for the ranch? All right. Uh, moving on, we've got our cycling base. Um, I don't have very many good photos of our mountain biking program at camp. Unfortunately, uh, it's a little bit challenging to take photos while mountain biking. Um, but we do have a, a couple mountain biking trails and we'll be developing more this spring. Um, as part of that, uh, as part of our kind of getting ready for camp season. Um, so we have a two mile loop um, and then we're hoping to put in a five mile loop as well, which will overlap some of the horseback trails, uh, but we'll be making sure to schedule everything accordingly so that there's no, uh, no conflict between uh, biking and horseback riding. Um, but we do provide all the helmets for this. And if you have scouts that are, or adult leaders that are very into biking, um, they are welcome to bring their own bikes as long as they are in good repair. Um, our staff are generally knowledgeable with bikes, but by no means are they uh, certified bike mechanics at your local bike shop. Um, so make sure that you have bikes that are in good working condition before they are at camp. Um, and we have mountain bikes and we also have fat tire bikes as well. So um, we have a variety of, of experiences for everybody to have. Um, and these are the trail rides for these are both at camp um, and then depending on interest, there may be opportunities to go out to Jack Lake for older scouts as well, which is a nearby um, single track trail system. Um, and the cycling base, if you're not familiar with it, the cycling base is located uh, just across the road from our welcome center. There's, uh, if you look at, there's a kind of a bigger, uh, bigger 
building with a 16 foot tall door and then there's a, a cycling wheel or a bike wheel on the side of the building pointing out to the back of the building, um, which is where the cycling base is, is just on the back side of that building. Okay. And then our climbing wall, um, Chuck Pint, are you still on the call? Would you like to tell everybody about your area? Yes, I would actually. Good. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, the, the climbing wall is set up so that we do the climbing merit badge um, mornings. Um, Monday through Thursday with makeup times on Friday morning, just like all the other areas. But in the afternoons and, and at least one evening a week, we have uh, time for the uh, troops to sign up for either climbing, zip lining, or, Roy left this out, crate stacking. I did leave that out. Yes. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I, I have been doing a lot of uh, Macajo and Camp promotions at OA elections, and uh, I've been getting a few few scouts uh, excited about doing crate stacking, especially when I tell them the Macajo on record for a single stack of crates is 17. That's and pretty good. They all want to beat that. <laughs> mm -hmm. The world record is something like 34. It's ridiculous. Anyway... Yeah. Roy's got some pretty good pictures here of our zip line. Um, we do have to kind of limit the number of scouts per hour to about 20. That's just as many as we can really handle, just so you know. And we're hoping to have the sign-up sheet this year uh, via Google Docs set up where you can check off which you want to do, the climb, the zip, or the crate stacking so that me and my staff can have the appropriate area ready for you when you uh, get there. Um, I think that's all I got. Any questions, comments? Uh, for those of you not, not familiar with Chuck, he is our Cope and Climbing Area Director. So for, the, for camp and uh, running all of our local Cope and Climbing opportunities as well. Yeah, by the way, I'm still looking for more people to be on the COPE and Climbing Committee at the council level. So if you're interested <laughs> in COPE and Climbing, contact me. Yeah. Okay. Moving on from our COPE and Climbing area, if there's no other questions, we've got our at camp sign up. So things that you can sign up for once you are at camp and again totally spaced on the the uh, crate stacking here but you can sign up for whitewater rafting uh, once you're at camp uh, these are all going to be via the uh, an online sign up system that you'll be able to use uh, one, or go to your camp office and sign up for um, troop climbs and zip lining I uh, already saw some photos of the zip line uh, mountain biking rides um, horseback rides and then um, pontoon boat uh, rides as well. Um, if you have a, uh, a boating license in Wisconsin, you'll be able to take out the pontoon boats as well. Or if you have um, more experience uh, with um, boating as well, please contact me ahead of camp um, and we'll discuss and uh, possibly get you out on the pontoon boat uh, as a part of a troop, kind of a troop use of the boat. Um, so for fishing at camp, while we're talking about pontoon boats and fishing, um, anybody over the age of 16 does need a Wisconsin fishing license. Anybody under the age of 16 does not. Um, it's, it's exactly 16. Um, so uh, yeah, so if you're planning to fish at camp, make sure you have one. You can get them at, uh, if you forget on your way up to camp, you can always get one at the uh, local uh, there's two places, there's two gas stations just down the road from camp, just maybe three or four minutes away uh, that you can get your fishing licenses at. Or you can get them online too, um, and that all works. Uh, we're not going to check it, but the, the DNR has occasionally come through, not specifically to check on people's fishing permits, but uh, just to, to see what's going on. So because um, Lake Killian is a public lake, we just happen to own all of the um, the land that accesses it. So for the most part, 
actually, I think there's only been one time where I've seen any non-scouts on the lake and they kayaked up a very, very challenging um, waterway to get to camp. So it's very, very uncommon in uh, the better part of 20 years, actually, yeah, 20 years of being around camp, I've only heard of one, one group um, braving Skids Creek to get up to camp. So, yeah. Uh, we do have field trips as well on Friday morning. So uh, these typically are, yeah, Friday morning during uh, what is oftentimes a makeup time if you have scouts that missed activities for one of the other um, at camp signups. So if they are in fire safety merit badge or if they just really want to check out what a volunteer fire station looks like, um, on Friday mornings we'll go to the Pickerel Fire Station, which is, um, if you're at the camp entrance, it is a minute down the road. Um, and we have a really great uh, partnership with them and they will have uh, one of their firemen will come out and give a tour of the fire station. And then uh, forestry merit badge Friday morning will also get a chance to go out on a field trip uh, to our uh, foresters uh, lumber mill. So we have a very, very awesome forestry company that helps us manage our, our 1500 plus acres um, and uh, they are gracious enough to give us uh, forest uh, tours of their lumber operation, as well as of their, they have a teaching forest where they talk about all the different types of land and forest management that they are able to do. So, yeah, it's another really, really cool uh, field trip. Yeah. So questions on field trips or at camp signups? Uh, moving on from those then. Um, yeah, and these these would be open to anybody that's interested, and these are coordinated throughout the week with your uh, office staff, uh, whether that's east or west office staff. Okay, looking at service opportunities at camp. Uh, one of our kind of Makajuan specific programs, we do a uh, camp improvement program called the Baden-Powell Distinguished Unit Program. Um, so you'll get a full breakdown of that uh, once you are with a full page description of it, and then I'll also post that up um, online once this year's version of it gets finished up. But it is a uh, program that where um, each unit that attends camp has the opportunity to be recognized at the end of the week as um, achieving the Baden-Powell Distinguished Unit Award. Uh, which is a flag that you can bring home and put on your troop flag or your patrol flag, however you see fit. Um, and that encompasses uh, participating in a variety of camp programs, whether that's um, taking part in uh, like flag ceremonies at camp or whether it's building a camp improvement program or uh, if you have scouts that volunteer to be MCs at a closing campfire or uh, a variety of other kind of ways that you can earn points for your troop or crew as you are at camp. So this is uh, one of the new campsite archways that was built. Uh, Troop 55 built it for their for their campsite in Bowie uh, in 2021. And it's a very beautiful little archway. Um, and it's tall enough. It's really nice because it's tall enough that we can still drive our work trucks in there um, if we need to help fix anything else in the campsite. So um, important distinctions, we will be um, having some kind of Baden-Powell project guidelines for this season that we haven't had in years past, like uh, how big should an axe yard be? How far away should a fire pit be from your campsite or from your uh, structures in your campsite? Or how tall should a campsite arch be? Um, so just trying to give a little bit more guidance and help keep camp looking uh, uniform and clean, but without wanting to take away from the troops freedom to kind of design and customize their home away from home during the summer. Uh, another opportunity for uh, service during the summer is our Order of the Arrow work projects, whether that's if you have ordeal candidates uh, in NEIC and they are participating in the Order of the Arrow ordeals on Saturdays, or whether it's uh, if you have uh, Order of the Arrow members, whether from NEIC or not, and you're at camp during an odd week, uh, they can help build the Order of the Arrow ceremonial fire that we have on Friday nights of the odd weeks of camp. 
um, which is that photo on the bottom left there. It takes many hands to make the work light, but it is a, a lot of fun. Um, yeah. Um, this year, uh, it hasn't happened yet, so I don't have any photos of it yet, but we have a conservation program as well that will be helping to improve trails and habitat all over campus, so. Questions on service opportunities. And if you have a any, any ideas that you want to do for your camp, uh, for your campsite, or whether it's for East or West Camp overall, um, feel free to contact me about it or feel free to contact your uh, particular camp director. So that either East Camp Director at makajwan.com or West Camp Director at makajwan.com and they can help guide you on, um, on ideas for good projects at camp too. Okay. Moving on, uh, we do still have some space for high adventure. So if you have older scouts or if you have friends in other units that are interested in participating in high adventure for this summer, uh, we have uh, Ice Age Trail, Flambeau Flowage Canoeing, and Wisconsin River Headwaters Canoeing are all uh, very, very fun uh, kind of entry-level uh, trips uh, that are a great way to spend a week of uh, a week of your summer. If you have any questions about that, uh, you can head to bakajwan.com slash high adventure and learn more about the trips. Uh, or if you want to talk to me directly, you can email me or call me uh, that way. Um, and then custom troop shirts as well. So we do have an online store and I wanna make sure I didn't get my dates all mixed up on here because I may have. Um, no, I didn't. Okay, so um, you have just over a month left to order um, custom troop shirts with this year's loon on it. Uh, there'll be a kind of a bur that burgundy red uh, heather color. Um, and you'll be able to put your troop number and city and state on the back uh, of each shirt if you would like. There's also a variety of other options on there from there's, there's swim trunks, there's sweatpants, uh, flannels, vests, some uh, hoodies and pullovers, all stuff that if you order before May 22nd, it'll get shipped out and you'll receive it all uh, before you go to camp. So you, if this is a, a, it's a setup where you order it and then um, starting in early June is when they start getting shipped out. So. Yeah, but they're very cool. Uh, it's a really nice way to have uh, everybody in your troop um, kind of looking all the same with a nice class B uh, shirt that is easier to wash than a scout uniform. Because um, as we all know, the class A uniforms uh, show dirt <laughs> pretty well um, and can uh, they don't necessarily wash out as well as a t-shirt does. Um, then you can get cotton t-shirts or wicking t-shirts as well. Uh, moving on from that, if you have any questions, uh, if you need help with your registration, um, please email uh, Debbie at debbie.geiger at scouting.org. If you have any other questions about Makajwan overall, um, go ahead and email me at reservation director at makajwan.com. Or if you have my scouting.org one, that's rory.fencil at um, scouting.org. Um, and if you have high adventure specific questions, you can also email high adventure at makajwan.com. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, that's all that we had for today. Um, are there any, uh, any other questions that people have that they'd like to get answers to? Because I'm more than happy to stick around for 10, 15 minutes to answer, answer any questions you may have. Seems like there's not too many questions tonight. 
Um, if you do have any questions in the meantime, please, uh, please reach out to me. I will get back to you as quick as I can. Um, and I want to make sure that you guys are as prepared for camp as you can be. And thank you all very much for attending. I, uh, it's, it's always good to see all the, the people that are here. Rory, I have a quick question about.